How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I wanted to share some information with you. Sometimes there's uh, great advice out there, sometimes there's information, and then there's sometimes misinformation. And so today, I wanted to tackle a handful, just a, a few of the misinformation things that I hear out there occasionally, and give you some of the details and information behind it to help set some of those straight. So our first one, I'm sure I'm gonna get lots of great comments on this video. The first one is never leave your great takes open because you can get the smell, sewer smell, up into your RV through the sink. There's a couple of reasons why that's incorrect, and if you're getting a sewer smell inside of your RV, it might mean that you have more problems and something that you need to fix that will be helpful to know. Just a quick side note on that, it is the best way to do that is to allow some of that gray water to be caught in your gray water tank before you empty your black water tank. That way when you empty your black water tank and you close that valve, you can then let your gray water go and it flushes out anything that was left in those pipes, kind of cleans it out and flushes it out. So that's an excellent way to do it, but you don't have to catch 100% of your water. So back to talking about those smells coming up through your sink. So each sink in your kitchen sink, underneath the bathroom sink, in the shower, there's actually a pee trap. When those are going to the, the gray water tanks, there's a little trap in there that's gonna hold water so that way none of those smells can actually come up. As long as you have water in there, the smells cannot come up in there unless you have something else wrong with your plumbing. So it's actually impossible for the gases and those smells to come up through here because of that P-trap. Now we're talking about any time that you're using your RV. If it's sitting in storage and all that water in the P-trap evaporates, you can get smells that come up through there. But if you've used it any time recently, there's going to be water in that P-trap and that's what's gonna block any of those gases and odors from coming up to smell inside the RV. Another issue you could have is we often see in RVs is we see these cheater valves or an air admittance valve uh, where you have a sink and they didn't have a way to be able to vent it. Everything actually needs a vent and plumbing so that wastewater can actually flow through those pipes. It's kind of like a, a straw. You know when you'd put your finger on the end of a straw and then you would let it go, letting that water out by releasing the top of the straw is the same way a, a plumbing vent works in a system. You need to have it open on the other end so that water can flow. Now, the reason I mention these plumbing vents is because they do terminate on the roof of your RV, so they vent to the outside, but you could get that smell that comes down into a window, but it should not terminate inside of the RV, except for those cheater vents, the air admittance valves. So we have one underneath our bathroom sink, and the way that it works is if you use the faucet and air needs to enter the system so that that water can flush down. Uh, it has a little spring and a valve in there, a seal in there, so that when that air is demanded or needed, it allows the air to go through, and when that demand is gone, it seals back up. Now, if this was to fail, you had a failure in your plumbing system, you could get smells through that if you had your gray tanks open. So each one of these would actually be a failure or something that needed to be repaired in your plumbing system if you were getting smells inside of the RV, or it's a gust of wind that's bringing it through a window or one of the, the roof vents back down in, uh, but it's not necessarily the smell of your gray tank just being open and coming up through the sink because of that P-trap. Oh, one last side note on that. Some people will create a little P-trap in their sewer hose connection outside, so that way none of the smells could even get close to the RV. Okay, the next one has to do with the RV battery disconnect. And so we've heard this from RV dealerships that they say when you get to an RV park, your destination, you're connecting in your RV to power, that you should disconnect the battery and let the converter supply all the 12 volt throughout the RV. I would actually say the opposite. If you're plugging in your RV at an RV park, leave your battery connected. For one, we're not seeing the same old converters, single stage converters that we used to in RVs. Majority of the time, we're seeing multi-stage converters out there on these RVs that aren't going to overcharge your battery, isn't going to boil them over and ruin your battery. So your battery is typically going to be safe if you have a multi-stage converter inside of your RV. If you lose RV park power, 
your fridge can auto switch over to propane. You still have the 12 volt for all the electronics in there to make that happen. So it can auto ignite and it can work off of propane and none of your food spoils. And the other thing about the disconnect is they don't always 100% disconnect everything from the battery. So some things might be working off the battery. Some things might be working off the converter. It's better just to leave your battery connected to the converter and allow the whole system to work properly. We actually just helped a guy with this a couple of weeks ago. He was having issues with his RV. He just needed to leave his battery connected and it solved all of his problems. Now, another piece of misinformation out there that I've heard before is adding the, the capacity of your hot water tank to your fresh water capacity. So if you had a 60 gallon fresh water tank and you had a 10 gallon water heater in your RV, you'd say that you had 70 gallons, which you're not really going to be able to have 70 usable gallons when you get out there. You have 60 in the tank and 10 that is always going to be there in the, the water heater. That's just because it's really impractical to try and use the water out of the water heater once you've exhausted your 60 gallons of fresh water. Once you've used the 60 gallons of fresh water, your pump is going to stop working. You're still gonna have 10 gallons in your water heater and you don't really have a way to use it. I mean, I, I guess you could, uh, after you've run out of water in the 60 gallon tank, you could turn off the water heater, switch it over to bypass, drain the water out of there, and then transfer that over into your fresh water tank. And then you wouldn't have hot water for the 10 gallons. But honestly, I bet hardly anybody would ever do that. So really, you still just have 60 gallons because the 10 gallons that you came out with in the water heater, you're going to be going home with 10 gallons in the water heater when you go home. So if you have an RV salesman try and tell you it's extra capacity, that's really the, the whole story on that. Now, the last one I've heard at RV dealerships and truck dealerships, and it has to do with the, the towing capacity of vehicles and the weights of RVs. So when we bought our RV from Lazy Days, they actually did a good job with this. They, they asked our information on the truck, they wanted to check the towing capacity, the payload, and they wanted to make sure that the RV we were buying fit within the, the capabilities of that truck. But I've been on the flip side of that coin helping a friend shop for a truck and we went to a, a dealership and the salesman had no clue that there was even information printed on the door jam of the truck to the capabilities of what it can do with weight and cargo carrying capacity. Uh, had no idea that that information was there and didn't know how to help you size the truck to your RV. Now I've also seen it at an RV dealership where the guy heard diesel and he didn't even care about the size or the capabilities of that specific truck and, and was just willing to sell an RV no matter what truck was there. And I've also heard people say, just get a dually and you can tow anything you want. Well, that really depends on the age of the dually because if you look at an F-350 from 2007 to 2021 and you look at the numbers, they are nowhere even close to each other. The, the 2021 has way more capabilities of what it can tow compared to 2007. That's easy to understand, but the, the important thing that I would want to communicate on this is to not just say, diesel or dually or, or whatever, is to be informed, look at the numbers and work through that process. We've done a video on how to work through that, so I don't wanna duplicate all that, but we have a, a download sheet that you could use to fill out all your information when you go to a scale. We even had one of our viewers set up an Excel spreadsheet so you can punch in your numbers and it does all the math for you in the background, makes it extremely easy for you. So it links down in the description that takes you to the website so you can use all those resources. The main thing is I want you to be informed and have those resources available so that you can make informed decisions. Uh, JD, a, a big truck, big RV, also has some excellent advice, uh, great information about towing capacity with some good recommendations. I'm always up for some good, solid advice. So uh, leave a comment down below if you guys have some advice that you wanted to be able to pass along that you think is great for other RVers to be able to hear and share. Uh, let's fill up those comments down below with excellent advice that you would love to pass along. So I think that's gonna do it for today. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.